Recording in progress. No, don't. Um, Elizabeth, don't submit the postcard on Canvas. If you do, um, that will alert me to um, the fact that you have gotten it, um, that you have submitted it. But to submit it as a Photoshop file is difficult on Canvas. So just submit a JPEG of it. But then what, so that I can see your original Photoshop file, um, upload that to our shared Google Drive folder. I mean, you have a folder in our shared folder. And within that, there should be two folders, one for the assignments and one for the lessons. Put it in the assignment folder. There shouldn't be an issue with Google Drive, but sometimes Canvas, that's why I use it, one of the reasons. Um, but Canvas sometimes has trouble with large files. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, let me make sure that I am recording. I am recording. So, um, to start with today's talk, um, question, panelist. No, did I raise my hand? Didn't mean to. Let me go ahead here. Um, hold on one second. There we go. Okay. So everything seems to be working okay. Um, anyway, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our 192 Digital In Machine with Photoshop for the spring semester 2022. Um, today, we're going to cover a couple of things. One is that I want to start with the basics of movie poster design, which is your next assignment. And I would get on it right away because you only have three weeks to complete it. Um, if you want, you can take four weeks, but um, we're going to start the next assignment and I want to give you a little bit more time for that. And that will be to do a digital painting because that will be a little bit harder. Conceptually, the movie poster is harder, but um, probably easier to execute. Okay. So this is an example of what I have, what I did last semester for myself. This would be equivalent to what you would be doing. Um, I will demonstrate maybe next week on my recommendation of how to get started with it. Um, but this pertains to my current life, um, moving from Southern California to Laurel Bay. Um, I will be retiring in this, you know, after this semester. And so that's where my wife and I are going to be. So um, using myself and my wife are the key players up here. These are the key actors. And using the subtitle from LA to Moral Bay. And I titled the movie Moving Forward. And you'll also notice that I have credits down here. Now, are these credits for this particular movie? No. These are placeholder credits that you can get online that I, I will show you where to get those. This happens to be a photograph that I took um, from in, in Morro Bay. Okay, it's technically adjacent to Morro Bay, but you get the idea. So it's um, to give you some ideas about movie poster design. Is I think some of the best movie poster designs are the ones that are pared down and very direct. And um, I, won't, I hesitate to use the word simple, but um, graphically, I think they're simple. You use maybe one, two, three images tops to do to create what you need, have a dynamic title, make sure that uh, the text that you incorporate, you know, the, the font, um, matches the, the story you're trying to tell. Um, I think most of the time, not always, but if you, you know, center it as I have, 
make a pretty direct, kind of like what you would see in a billboard, because that's what it has to do. It has to function like a miniature billboard where um, people pa you know, passing by or even driving by will see it and it will register with them very quickly. If you make something that's too complicated, that takes too long for a viewer to read, um, it won't be as successful. Think of it this way. Um, movies are constructed of thousands of individual frames, maybe even more than thousands. I don't know. It's 24 frames um, per second. Um, so multiply that times 60 seconds um, for a minute, and then you're going to multiply the minutes times um, uh, you know, um, you know, how long the movie is, if it could be two, three hours long, that's, that's a lot of frames. So what this serves to do is to create kind of a logo for the movie. It's distilling all of those frames down into a single frame, that hopefully with the image combined with the title, convey the story that you're trying to tell. Now, the story that you're going to try to tell with your movie poster, again, it's similar to what I've done here. It doesn't necessarily incorporate my entire life story. It's this moment in time. It could be how you're feeling at the moment, maybe about, you know, for, for a while, last, uh, last couple semesters, students have felt, felt kind of exhausted and um, about having to work in an online format um so that was communicated in some other movie posters um if there's an event in your life that stands out then maybe you could use that do you have to put your image an image of you in the movie poster absolutely not um just as i created this one here it's a nice sunset photograph that i've doctored up a bit um and, uh, and i'll show you that I've shown you that before, but I'll show you it again. Um, to make sure that it works in a vertical format. Now, we're doing a mini poster. So the, the dimensions of it are a width of 11 inches and the height is 17 inches. Okay. So it's a larger format than what we worked at before. The postcard was relatively small. Could have been five by seven, seven by nine, three by five. So the file size for this will be considerably larger. The resolution should, should be about the same. Minimum, excuse me, 200 pixels per inch. Ideally, um, 300 pixels per inch. So you're going to have to collect either. I, I think it will work best if you use some of your own photographs. But if you want, if you find images on the internet that are high enough resolution or large enough, I should say, they'll be 72 pixels per inch is what they will be. But if they're large enough to work um, in your movie poster, then by all means, you can do that. And again, if they work successfully to convey your story. Okie doke. So what I want to do is to show you some examples and that you can see these samples yourself. Um, where I have saved them on a file in Pinterest. So if I come back here and we go to Pinterest, and this can be um, reached from my website at the very, if you go down to the bottom under social networks, that sort of thing, um, you'll find this. And these are some of the movie posters that I think are, are excellent. Um, if we look here, um, some of my, my all-time favorites really date back to the late 70s um, when illustration was still very popular. But I've added some others that are not, okay, that are more um, recent. Um, typically, for example, if we look at this, the center image, um, interstellar, normally I would avoid stacking text at all costs. 
But in this particular instance, this movie poster works really, really well. It's very simple. It's, you know, it, it emphasizes the vertical the center. You just have, you know, these kind of, uh, it's almost like a, um, in the Milky Way shown vertically with a star and a silhouette. And you can even see the little people down below. And that comes in soon. And notice that they, so that the, the type reads against the background when it's dark, it's, um, uh, the background is dark, the type is white, and when it reads over the, the white, it switches to black. Simple and really, really elegant. Okay. So I just found this today, for example. I'm trying to go back. This is a little sluggish, but that's the way it goes. I hope that's not due to my internet speed right now. But I have 31 of these for you to take a look at. And hopefully you can see them. And if you find them on your own, because if this continues um, with the speed, I will not do this. Um, I won't keep you know focusing on the individual ones, but I'll just point them out to you. But if you look at them, for example, this one with Scarlett Johansson, Lucy, um, it's a simple black and white image, it's a image of her. Okay. And but the eyes are in color, and notice that they are strategically placed so that you see through the word Lucy, you capture her eyes. Really, really stunning. Um, the other one, Django Unchained. Okay. Um, it has the main characters, but it has the principal character first. And notice that he's mostly, with the exception of his face, in silhouette, so that the tile can be placed inside it. The um, any you know, ancillary text, and at the bottom, you could also put the, um, the credits. And notice that the secondary and tertiary, really the secondary characters, are a little bit. Um, less bold, smaller, so that they read, you know, behind the principal character here. Okay. Um, again, one of my all-time favorites. And notice how these were all centered. Or they work with that. Uh, for those of you who've had a drawing class or art history, um, simple images, not too complex, complicated. Some are, and I will point those out. But, you know, if we look at the, um, the Close Encounters poster, um, it's balanced. The roadway here, one point perspective, drives you towards the center. And likewise, looking up at the spaceship um, brings your eye back down to the center of the, the piece. Traffic is a little bit different. It's a little bit more complex because this is typical of what movie posters have become. They take all the principal secondary characters and tertiary characters and they throw them into the movie poster. But you'll notice that um, it falls, you know, it, the way that the composition is constructed is that you read, you know, you read this from left to right and it, your eye follows in succession these portraits and brings you down to the main um, image down here. And it's still, your, your eye is focused on the center because the greatest amount of contrast lies between the silhouette of this character and the white, light yellow and burst of um, uh, explosion behind him. And then they have traffic at the bottom. So the title doesn't have to go at the top, can go at the bottom, it can go in the middle. Okay. For um, old time movie posters, your Sunset Boulevard still works, I think, very well today. Notice how they've used the image of film to place the title. Okay. Um, we have a Clint Eastwood movie, and again, it's a single image. He's principally um, in silhouette. OK, 
okay, with nice backlit highlights. And then that, you know, subtitles an upper right hand corner, um, title in the lower right hand corner. I would probably put the title elsewhere, but it still it works really beautifully because that's a very powerful image. It focuses on, you know, his face really and his hands with the gun. Silent Movie is another excellent movie poster. Um, they had to um, add Dom DeLuise and they added, um, I think his name is Marty Feldman. Um, and here's Mel Brooks in the background. But look at how the, the style of the, of the movie title is, Silent Movie. And it has this really you know, beautiful characteristic um, 3D um, modeled projection of the word as it curves. Again, with a single character in the back and a roll of film behind him. And you'll find that very often, just like a Jurassic Park, the way that the, um, um, the dinosaur is centered here and is behind the, um, is, is contained in this basically, it's basically a logo. Um, it serves as kind of like a, a target to draw your eye towards the center. Okay. Now, the more complex ones that I still think are like, well, well we go to the, before we go to the more complex ones, and they're much more difficult to do, um, would be the Raiders movie posters, okay? And those, and as well as the um, Star Wars posters, okay? But again, we get to that look at Empire of the Sun, the sun, Japanese, you know, setting sun, a rising sun, I should say, um, functions like a target. A lot of these do that, even with the Raiders of the Lost Star poster. We focus in on that. Let me try to get in, see that for a second here. It's going to take it. That's why I didn't want to view all of them. It takes a little bit or, you know, longer to focus on, you know, for these to pop up. And as soon as I log off and I'm not broadcasting all of you, it will pop up in a heartbeat. But notice the title, Raiders. Um, it's done in the old style serial movie um, poster style. Um, Indy is the principal character. And again, he's framed in the background by this it's, I think, like a, a Mayan type of uh, relief. But again, it functions to focus your attention on the center. And then look at all the tertiary or secondary and tertiary characters. You know, they're very small, subordinate to him, and follow outside of that, that circle. So it still reads very well. You see in the Harrison Ford first. And, that's, and then after you read that, then you read these other characters and your eye moves around in a circular fashion from left to right, right to left. And then once again, focuses on him. Okay, so a strong, strong, um, let me go back, composition, you know, beautifully illustrated. Uh, let me get back to this. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go down here. This one is really nice on gravity. Um, really elegant. Again, simple, but notice where the highlight is of the rising or setting sun um, with earth in the back and the um, uh, um, astronaut here to the left um, that you're really, your eye is focused on the center. Um, the Star Wars posters are very much the same as the indie, that they kind of follow a triangular, very static, you know, uh, not, well, they are, it is static, but stable um, design format. Again, with depending on which poster you see will determine 
um, which of the characters is in the foreground. And, you know, there are, there are a number of them that have been developed over time. Okay. Um, some of the ones that you might consider, you know, following that I think are pretty interesting. If you look at the one to the right under boyhood, um, that's actually movie um, took place over several years and it follows the the life of a boy until he becomes you know reaches manhood. And you'll notice how they you know emphasize the chair down the middle and that they kind of um, align the two together. Um, it really it speaks and it says a lot and conveys the, the story very well without having, you don't need to know the story, you know, much about the story at all. E.T. is another one of my favorite movie posters. Um, this is one of them. Where the boy and E.T., you know, silhouetted against the moon. And here's E.T. and the boy catching, which is really kind of taken from um, Michelangelo's Sistine ceiling. Look at simple but elegant choice for the type um, for the um, the title of it. Okay, not complex at all, but the, it can play. It conveys um, a lot. Um, let's go down again. Let's look at some more. I've got tons of these here for you to take a peek at. Um, all of them, I think, are good, but they're, they're mostly pretty simple. Green Book is a bit unusual because they've cropped um, a horizontal image of a car and focused on the characters in the movie and then placed the title and everything within the door of it. Um, another way of working with more complex scenes, if I can find one here, should be... I wanted one with a silhouette. Yeah, there we go. It's one right in the middle here. The Shawshank um, Redemption. And there are others that do this as well. Notice that they've taken the principal character and made it mostly in silhouette. And then they, within that um, silhouette, they place um, additional characters. Okay. Notice that they're balanced. You know, with, um, one facing to the right, one to the left. So again, it focuses your attention not off the page, but centered. Saving Private Ryan is the same thing. It's principally a silhouette, the ground plane, and then, you know, push back in the background, not as strong, you know, are the main characters. Okay. Um, all of these, I think, really, really strong. And there's others that you know you can look at too that we can see down here. And if you want to find your own, you know, if you want to find additional ones, it's very simple. Just simply do a Google search. So if I were to click to add here in the browser, I want to add a Google search. What I would do, and while I'm doing this, I'll show you how to um, get the examples for the. Um, the credits that I want you to add to your, um, your movie poster, because you don't have to make those yourself. But if I put in um, uh, award-winning movie posters, and I hit the return key in my search, Initially, what's going to happen is it's going to come up with text. But then if you click here and you look at images, you're going to find a boatload of them, more than probably you want to see in a lifetime. Of. Okay, so here's lots of ideas. So I recommend that before you even start, you know, make some notes to yourself. Try to collect images of you or images that you think relate to your life or however you, know, you see this movie poster coming together, start collecting those and then scroll through these and look at them and see if there are any that kind of ring a bell, that look you know, like something that maybe you want to 
used as a, um, a template or as, as a guide, and maybe there is a couple of them. And also, as I said, make sure that you pick a typeface that warrants um, the title of the poster or warrants to be used as the title of the poster that helps convey, you know, the, the theme of your movie, the story, you know, helps to further the storyline. And also what I said too is where, where you'll find the credits. That if I put in here a Google search, I put in movie poster credit images. And hit the return key. And I go to images. One. See how I found a ton of them. So I probably wanted to say movie. Did I say movie poster images? Because that's what I wanted. But there are some here. Here's one that looks like it's probably it's a Disney film. It's probably a, a ping file that so that we have the transparent background and it is in black, but you can always reverse it out, make it white. Um, they're contractually obligated to have these credits in a movie poster. And what they serve to do in your design is to make sure that you have allowed in your design a place for them. You don't want to play something critical, you don't have something um, important in the movie poster going on and have these credits layered and slapped on top of it. It would ruin the whole, your whole design. But there's a bunch of them that, you know, try any one of them. Some for 007 over here, and you name it, tons of them that are worth trying. Okay, so that's where you find those. So back to my movie poster. Actually, before I go to move my movie poster, what I want to do is I'm going to go back to um, my website. I'm going to go to home. And um, I'm going to go to, let me go back to here. Uh, Okay, it's in this home over here. There we go. We go to Kirk's classes um, and we look at the student examples that I have from past semesters. Um, I don't have many of them, but there are a couple of really good ones. Here, let's look at this one. No, that's not it. This one here. There we go. Right after that. I'll pause this. And we'll bring this up. So again, this was done by Isaac Bella Cruz. Um, he happened to be in a punk band. And so that's an image of him. And notice how he didn't take a really a, a, a straightforward treatment, but he exaggerated the lights and darks, which you can easily do in Photoshop, and then work with um, strong greens and blacks. And then the contra contra contrast that used the type at the top, the ringer in red to complement it, complement the ring works really, really nice. Here's another one where um, Oscar didn't use any images of himself. He made more of a, uh, a montage, a collage. But again, he used the silhouette, as I was mentioned earlier, and placed um, an image of a woman with a child inside, and then emphasized here the silhouette family, the background image um, of seascape. But I don't quite know what that means, but what really drew me to his poster is how he designed the title. Okay. Next one um, by Richard Mallory was about himself, very shy, introverted person. And so he was able to illustrate most of that and work with photographs. And again, you can see how he, within this, contained within this image with multiple people in here, but he really emphasizes himself and you really get the sense 
by looking at it that he feels kind of alone in a crowd. And notice where he places his title. Simple, make sure that when you create a title, it's just a few words, not a lot. And in this particular instance where he used all caps, it does work. Normally I would shy away from all capital letters, especially if you have a lot of words. And in lieu of, of that, you can use small caps. This is not a movie poster, but again, it's an excellent poster that again is very complicated, but notice how symmetric it, symmetric it, symmetrical it is and how it, the, um, the city streets, the perspective, draw your eye that V right to the center of the movie poster. And then surrounding that, you have all the images, or not movie poster, but poster that um, surround it. You know, using Noah's Ark as an example, and the flooded, you know, New York City um, as an example for global warming. Um, you didn't have to say global warming; it really expresses it very clearly without having to use any words at all. Okay, so those are some really good examples. Not a lot but some that you have to guide and also lots of professional ones. Now, how I made my movie poster, as I started with 11 by 17, let me go ahead and I'm gonna turn all of these off, all of these layers off. I'll show you what I started with. So what I did, let's go ahead, uh, turn that one off and use this one. This was my image, which was actually taken at Bayside Los Osos, which is adjacent to Morro Bay. And it was a sunset photograph I took and it, there was no way that I could extend it up here. I mean, I could copy part of this and paste it and I could try um, uh, to use uh, content to wear fill, but nothing worked. So what I did is I used one of the neural filters that is available now. And that when you take that, you combine this background with it. Okay, and here's the sky replacement group. It automatically will replace the sky from my photograph with the one that they provide and it blends it beautifully. So this looks as good as any um, and it, it, it helped me fit the vertical format without having to enlarge and possibly um, create artifacts and shaggies and things like that. So that's what I did for my principal image. And then I, on top of that, okay, I thought, well, what is this from my wife and myself? This, you know, this is going to be a new stage in our lives. We're moving, literally moving, and um, it, we're moving forward in our lives. So I use those two words. I picked a typeface, almost a slab serif for the word moving something that you would see on the side of a moving truck. And then it's kind of serif type for face and italicized it to emphasize the word forward here. So they're kind of visual cubes that are worked together. I don't need, I didn't need to stack them. I can work, work, work them as one. And then again, with a little subtitle here that I thought was sort of clever from LA to Morro Bay, kind of, you know, rhymes. And then adding our names as the principal characters to the top, which you see done all the time in movie posters. Come on. There we go. I use tracking so that um, one of the things that I'll talk about in the few minutes that we have left in on um, uh, Monday, I'll talk about in greater detail. 
so that you see these as blocks and they're centered and everything is centered and nice, but you don't get the, the, um, the feeling that it's static. And then the last thing that I added, added at the very top here was um, some credits that I got off the internet. Now, you'll notice over to the left, and this is what you may, or to the right, this is what you may have to do. I had to change the mode. If I go back to the mode where it says um, normal, this is what I got off the, the internet. It was white tie. I wanted the white tie. I didn't want the white, the black background, and I didn't want to use any other tool to select the background and delete it. It's better if you play with some of the modes. And what I found that worked best is um, you can just, you know, go through these until you find one that works. And the one that worked best for me was screen. Um, color works pretty well too, color dodge, but I found that screen worked best. So I didn't have to do a thing to it. And I was able to work with a white type. It made the black background disappear. Voila, I have a movie poster. It is really relevant to my life where I'm at at the moment. And I think conveys it pretty well. And I've used my own image, with the exception of using the, the neural image um, in the background to help me, you know, convert a horizontal image and make it work with a vertical format. Because that's the sort of thing that you're going to have to work with all the time. Okay. So that's it on movie posters today. Um, the next. 10, 15 minutes, I want to talk about the type tool. Since type is an important component of movie posters and any advertising design or design, that you're, design of any kind that you're going to be working with. Most people, um, maybe when who are interested in graphic design, don't realize how much you work with type. Um, if you like working with images, then maybe illustration or photography or fine art is the direction that you want to go. But if you really desire to work in graphic design, you're going to have to work with type extensively and have a feel for it and the con you know, what a specific typeface, even just the weight um, or the style can do to um, express a particular mood or feeling that you're trying to convey. Okay. Um, so let me create a brand new file. Here. And everything is bogging down here. So um, I'm just going to close this so it doesn't take up too much memory. I don't want to save it because it's already saved. No questions so far? No. So I'm just going to create a new file. 11 by um, 8 and a half by 11, just to show you what some of the different um, features in the type tool can do. So what I want for print and to convey, or you know, to communicate what I want to do right now, is make sure that I have eight and a half by eleven. That'll work for me. Letter size. And I can go ahead and I can create it. So just for the white background, three hundred pixels per inch. For demonstration purposes, I should probably use seven two. Um, but kind of too late now. So. Make sure that you have layers up and that you, uh, you know, visible and that our type tool is found over here. If I click on hold down, you'll find that there are other variations of that tool right here. So we have by default horizontal type. We'll also, um, if we want to switch to vertical type, we can do that. And that's part of the next le uh, lesson. Um, and these two are really not used anymore. They're a holdover years and years ago. But if you want a vertical or horizontal type, is an outline or a mask. It's really unnecessary. 
and we'll get to that in the next lesson. And I'll talk about that on Monday. So I'm just going to use horizontal type right now. To do that, and we do this in the very first day of class, pretty much, is that as soon as you select the type tool, um, generally it will have a default, not a aerial, but it will have um, a separate type face. And I forget, let me see. Um, let me go back here and see what we have. But everything is starting to bog down, so I might have to. They use. Um, It's that important, but you can see Myriad Pro. That's the one that's used very often that they have. So I'm just going to start with that. Okay. And I'm using the options menu at the top. Okay. So I have Myriad Pro. And just so that you can see it, instead of using regular, probably use something like bold. Must be something more than bold than regular. Now, if I don't see it there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look over here. And notice that aerial black is selected, but over here, that's kind of weird. I'm going to go ahead and switch from there to here. This isn't matching up, which is not good. I'll just use aerial black. And hopefully, it will work. And we have 54 point is the, the type size. Okay, so you can click anywhere and it should automatically give you some breaking. That's what the lower one gives some is. And notice that I had red selected for the type. You can change the colors of the letter forms individually, or I can highlight it all. And I can change the color from here. So I'll switch from red to go to the default black. Okay, just come down here. There we go. That should change it. And then what I want to do is, after I click OK, um, just type in what you want. So I'll type in some type. And again, everything is really getting sluggish. So that lets me know that my internet speeds up. Upstream is really very slow. So let's go back again. And I think we're going to cut it short today. And I will continue with this on Monday. Um, but anyway, let me take it as far as I can and then we'll call it quits. Um, so I'll just type some. There you go. Space. And it will continue to, to type horizontally until you hit the return key. And when I hit the return key, now I can say more type. And everything is really sluggish. Okay. And if I want to work with the letter spacing, if I want to work with the um, the, um, the distance between lines. Okay, I can come over here. And here we have the letting that we can play with. And right now it's set to 54 point. I have 54 point type and I have letting at 54 points. So it's set pretty tight. And um, for movie posters, and when you have really large type, you're probably not going to want to use the, the, the default um, um, <laughs> uh, letting here. And I'll show you when I go to default or auto, it will look, there's too much space between the lines. So you're probably going to want to set it a little bit tighter, have a little bit less letting, and um, it will look like a single unit rather than multiple lines of type, unless that's the look you're going. Then I can go ahead and let's say I want the second line of type to match the width of the first line of type. Okay, and I can highlight it. And then I can come back over here and I can adjust 
the tracking, which is this one right here. So now I can click here, and I can click on the center, and I can drag it to the right. And notice as I drag it, it stretches it out uniformly. And because my computer is getting sluggish here, this is what I was talking about with the names of my wife and myself and my movie poster. So if you want them to be, you know, the same width, then that's one way of doing it. Okay. I'm going to go back and set right now that set to 40. I'm going to go back here and just set this to. Um, okay. You also have the option of right now with everything selected. Uh, do you want it centered? Do you want it flush left? Or do you want it flush right? And it's determined by where you click the mouse. And I clicked it in the center somewhere. But when you're done with it, notice that when you're done, it automatically creates a layer for it, which is really kind of nice. And it's not catching up. It still has warm some in here. And when I click the checkbox here, you'll see that I have it set already. And I can discern one type layer from another because it's telling me what um, what letter forms I've used. Some other things that we can do. So for example, um, what if you want to create uh, an interesting kind of effect? Remember, because these exist on their own layer, we can add drop shadows. We can come down here and we can add layer effects in here. Um, another thing that we can do, let me go ahead and oh, come on. I want to get rid of that. Okay. There we go. I want to get rid of that. I want just I click OK. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. No, too big. Oh, what happened? What happened? Let me undo. There we go. Let's zoom in again. So let's say I want to apply a stylist effect to that. I can select the type. Highlight it. And then I can use this little button up here. It will also be found over here as well. But this allows us a different kind of, it, it's like a layer effect, but I want to create warped text. So if I click on here, it will give me some options for warped text. And the little dialog box pops up. Right now, there is no style that's been applied. But you can create on the fly some very um, interesting Tech, um, stylized text like, um, let me use this one here. Come on. Uh, this happens when the speed slows down. I'm going to use arc upper. So if you want to create, you know, some really interesting effects, similar to what we saw in Silent Movie. Um, you can do that quite easily here. So let's use the shell effect or the bulge effect, for example. These are the default settings here. Um, and the thing that's nice about this is that once I apply the effect, it should show up in the layers panel. It will also, and you can see that the little art underneath the key, it also is editable. It is non-destructive, which makes it very powerful. So you can go back and not only can you change the warping effect, you can change the type, you can change the typeface. So it makes it possible for you to make edits, um, in you know, infinite number of edits if you want, without you know being concerned about locking yourself in 
and making a mistake. So there's more that we need to cover. And I hope that my um, internet speed repaired on Monday so we can have a better experience. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave it here and we're gonna say I'm done for today. And I'll have this posted in about an hour. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to say goodbye, unless there are any questions from any of you about the postcard assignment or the movie poster assignment or anything like that. The lessons. Um, okay. Hold on here. Let's see. Let me look at attendees. Elizabeth, you have a question? You want to speak? Yeah. Elizabeth? Uh, is it working? Hello? Is it working? Yeah, it's working. I can hear you. Good. Um, I just wanted to double check yeah, with you I, because can you hear me? I posted both the assignments. I or double check with you because I posted, I posted the black and white on the Google Docs and the the I color the black and white on the Google Docs and the, the color. Okay. I just want to double check if like the flat because I did the big Photoshop okay. files. Double check if like the flat because I did the big Photoshop files. And then I saw people were submitting okay. the flat that's and fine. Um, that's fine. And then I saw people were submitting the flat and version. Yeah, I don't want that. So I will. In comments to each of them, I will say no. I don't want the flattened version. And if you if you want to put a flattened version on um, Canvas, that's okay. But make sure that you put a Photoshop version on Google Drive. Okay. okay. Does that clarify things for you? Okay. Okay. Um, I want to see just as I've I explained to you how I put my movie poster together. I want to be able to see all those steps, all those layers. I want to see if you use any adjustment layers, if you, you know, how you isolated the images, how you structured your entire um, postcard. And that will be true for the movie poster as well, for all of the assignments, really. Okay. And I hope that answers, that, you know, other people may have the same questions. Okay, Oak. Then, if there's nothing more, um, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to pause the recording, and um, we'll stop the share, and I'll go away. Okay. We'll see everybody on Monday.